What is going on everyone? My name is Hanson and welcome back to a brand new video. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to set up our backend API to fetch all of the guild bands. And we're also going to set up a route later to allow the logged in administrator to remove guild bands. So in other words, unban a user. So if we look at the Discord docs, you can see that there's a lot of docs for fetching guild bands, creating a guild band. So if you want to ban a user directly from the dashboard instead of banning them from uh, the Discord bot application, you can do that as well. Um, you can also uh, remove the guild bands as well. So or we'll, we'll create a feature where the user will be able to go on the dashboard and they can see all their all the users' bands, and we'll allow them to like unban them. And later on, we'll probably allow them to ban users based off of their guild ID. Because, of course, if you want to ban a user, uh, you would have to just call this endpoint uh, using the put method. And you would have to provide the user ID, which means that you can actually ban any user. Even if the user is not in your guild, you can ban them. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go over to my project. So I just wanted to mention something real quick. I'm using a package manager, well, not package manager, really. Uh, I'm using something called Lerna. I, would, I don't know if you would call it a package manager. I would call it, I would call it a monorepo manager. So it's pretty easy to use. Uh, I'm only using it just so I could run all three of my projects at the same time. So if you look over here on my Windows terminal, I have the dashboard, the NestJS API, and I also have the bot running all at the same time, which is pretty awesome. All right, so if you want to use Learner, I would encourage you to take a look at it. Uh, it's pretty easy to use, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to go into Discord Dashboard API. This is our NestJS project. And I'm going to jump into the source folder. And I'm going to jump into uh, the Discord module. We're going to go inside controllers, and we're going to go inside discord.controller.ts. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another endpoint that's going to just be responsible for fetching all of the uh, the guild bands. So I'm going to go ahead and use the get decorator and I'll do slash or guild slash bands. Okay, well actually it's supposed to be guilds guild ID slash bands. Okay, so when we fetch this endpoint, we're going to go ahead and make a get request to our domain slash discord uh, slash guilds and then the guild ID goes in the route parameter and then slash bands. Okay, uh, and you'll notice that it's the uh, the pattern is very similar to uh, how it's done in the Discord. Uh, if you look at the Discord docs, okay, guilds guild ID ban. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, do this. We'll go ahead and uh, create the method. So we'll call this get guild bands. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and use the param decorator and pass in that guild ID like that. Or not pass in the guild ID, pass in the string guild ID because that's the parameter that we are trying to get the value of. And then we'll name the, well, we'll name the argument, uh, the, the variable argument guild ID. And the data type is a string. Okay, so from here, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and go inside the Discord service. You may have already probably guessed it. We gotta go ahead and create an abstract method. And then we gotta go ahead and implement the abstract method in the actual implementation of this iDiscord service interface. Okay? And that's pretty much just the main pattern that you'll have to do every single time whenever you're working in NestJS. So we'll create a method called get guild bands. And this is going to take in a guild ID, and I think that's the only parameter we'll, we'll need. We probably won't need anything else. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go inside the iDiscord service implementation. So that's the Discord service class, which is located in the services class under the discord.service.ts file. In case you forgot. Let's go ahead and implement get guild bands, and this class has a dependency called Discord HTTP service, which if you remember, we use the service to actually uh, make the API calls. So we're gonna have to also set up another abstract method for the iDiscord HTTP service, and then we have to implement that abstract method. So we'll go ahead and call the method fetch guild bands. It's gonna return a guild ID of type string. Um, 
Now I'm going to leave the uh, type annotation alone for now. Well, actually, let me go ahead and find out what the type is going to look like. Okay, so it seems like the type is just going to return uh, an object with two properties. It's going to return a reason and it's going to return a user object. And the user object is going to return a user structure. Um, I'm not sure to the extent of how many properties it will return. I think it just varies based off of what is available. So I don't think it'll return values that are just null. Because right over here, you can see that it just returns five properties. But we'll type annotate this. So we'll have to create our own custom type. But let's do it after we finish setting up everything. Okay. So now that we have uh, created the abstract method inside I Discord HTTP service, we're going to go over to the implementation, which is the Discord service class. Well, actually, I'm sorry, not that. Uh, it's the actual... Uh, Discord HTTP service class. There we go. And we want to go ahead and implement the fetch guild bands method. Okay. And from here, all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the get the, uh, get the the bot token. I think it's the bot token. Um, yeah, I don't think it would make sense to use the bear token for this because we're, we're dealing with guilds. So you, sometimes you can even guess this too. If you're trying to make an API call to the Discord endpoint and you're not sure, uh, which authorization token you should use, whether it's the bear token, which is your authenticated users access token, or if you should be using the bot token, just ask yourself if you need to just ask yourself what type of data you want to get. If you have to get something that's regarding to guild bands, that's going to require um, the bot to actually be in the guild. So it would make sense to use the bot token. Though I'm not sure if it's possible if you can use the bear token if the user in that guild does have like correct permissions. But you can go ahead and try it out if you want to. But well, let's go ahead and continue. Um, so. What we're going to do is I'm just going to copy this whole thing. Okay. And all this does is first we're getting the bot token from the uh, environment variable. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're calling axios.get. And we're going to remove this type, this, uh, this generic type annotation for now. So we have the Discord base URL, which is just the uh, HTTPS discord.com slash API slash V9. That's just the base URL. And we're going to go ahead and specify the path. So we're going to change the path, obviously, but not by much because we definitely want to visit slash guilds and then slash guild ID. And then we're just going to change it from channels to bands. And the headers is going to stay the same. So pretty much everything is just the, the same exact thing. Okay. And then now all we do is we go ahead and simply call fetch guild bands from the Discord service. Okay, so we do return this dot discord dot h discord http service fetch guild bands pass in the guild ID and then we go to the controller level we reference the discord service instance right which is just this class over here and we just go ahead and call this dot discord service get guild bands and then guild ID. Okay. Um, cool. Honestly, you honestly, I think um, it probably would have been better if we had initially just used the HTTP service inside the controller. But uh, sometimes it's not too bad to just encapsulate that into its own service class and then call that from uh, the individual Discord service layer. But if you want to go ahead and do it this way, that's fine. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to go ahead and test this out. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my guild ID. Okay. So let me grab that. So we're going to go ahead and visit slash API slash, uh, I think it's slash discord slash guilds, guild ID slash bands. Seems like it returned a 500. Let me see what's going on. Oh, wait, I think I know why. I keep forgetting to do this. We actually need to await this call because this returns an Axios response and we need to get the actual data. So, excuse me real quick. Completely forgot that. All right, that should fix that. Okay, so it's an empty array. That's totally fine because it's 
it's likely that this guild does not have any bands. So let me go ahead and let me actually just get the I mean let me just check to see. I I do know that I have some guilds that may have banned a user. Let me check this server. Or maybe I may have unbanned a user. Okay, let, that's fine. I'll go ahead and ban a user. So let's just ban this user. Okay, so we just ban the user. And uh let's see. This is the right guild ID. It should be. Yep. Okay, so now you can see that when I refresh, we now have one guild ban. Okay, so pretty much um, one thing that I also want to mention as well is if you have, let's say, a thousand guild bans, it will actually return all thousand guild bans from that endpoint. I actually uh, thought that there would be some kind of pagination. Seems like there isn't. So a couple downsides to this is that if you actually use this endpoint, you might need to depend on literally just handling like, you know, just a large amount of uh, guild band objects that is returned from the Discord API that may or may not slow down your application a little bit because you're dealing with like a large payload that is being returned. So one thing that I would encourage you to do is maybe you could probably cache the data and maybe like, you know, like update it, update the cache every like minute or so. Um, but that's something that I'll leave you to worry about. Okay, but right now we're able to actually fetch the guild bands successfully, which is awesome. Now, before I finish this video, let me go ahead and do one more thing. I'm going to go ahead and just finish type annotating the uh, the services. And in the next episode, what we'll do is I'll actually just ban a couple of our random users. Um, and then I'll, and I'll show you that we have that data. And then what we'll do is we'll go into the front end. And then we're going to create another section that will allow the user to view the bands. And then we'll render out all of that stuff. And then... Uh, in another episode, we'll create an option where when you when, when you click on that user, you can get some options to unban, uh, unban the user. Or I think maybe there might be options where you can update like the reason they were banned as well. I'm not sure if you can do that, but if we can think of some other cool stuff, we'll do that. So let me go ahead and just before I end this video, I, I do want to type annotate everything so I don't leave you all uh, empty handed with that. So we're going to create a type called guild ban type. And it's going to have a reason, which is going to be undefined or a string. Uh, let's see. Where is get guild bands? There we go. Okay. So uh, let me click on here. Okay. And also, uh, it does tell you that you need to make sure you have the band member's permission. Okay. So if you don't have it, it's obviously not going to work. So... Let me go type annotate this. So the user object, let's go ahead and grab that. So let's type annotate this. So it's going to require an ID of type string, uh, username, string. I think we may have type annotate this some, some time ago, I think. Maybe, maybe not entirely, but that's okay. Yeah, so I'm just looking at the uh, I'm just looking at uh, the the user object here, and just, I'm just literally just type annotating it accordingly. Okay, and it also gives you a definition of what these properties are. All right, so I just went ahead and I just uh, type annotate this whole thing. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna create a new type. Uh, I'm going to actually call this Discord user type because I don't want to confuse this with an actual uh, our, our, our own platform user. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to type annotate like this. Okay. So like I said, uh, I pretty much just took every single property, looked at the type, and just type annotate accordingly. Okay. So now let's take this guild band type and let's go ahead and go back to our discord http service we're going to go ahead and type annotate this so it's going to be a guild band type it's going to be an array of guild band types rather okay and we're going to go into the interface of discord http and similar to what we did with the other uh, abstract methods we're going to type annotate fetch guild bands 
to return a promise of Axios response, and that Axios response returns uh, a guild an array of guild band types. Okay, and we're gonna go into Discord.ts, and we'll do the same thing. It's gonna be a promise of Axios response, guild band type, an array of them. There you go. So now we have IntelSense. So now it knows what data is, which is good. So if we need to do something with data, we could. But uh, let's say, for example, if we want to filter stuff out, we could do that as well. Okay, so that's going to be pretty much the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go over to the React project. And we're going to fetch this new endpoint that we just created. So I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.